this will be a road to the outside. Before the road, this was a trackless wilderness of forest and river. A strange and lonely world, where the waters flow north to Hudson's Bay. It lies more than 100 miles south of James Bay. Its only connection with the outside, the Ontario Northland Railway from remote Cochrane. Men pushed into this wilderness in search of fast water for the electric power needed by the Northern Ontario mine and pulp and paper mill. They built a power plant, the Abitibi Canyon Generating Station. This is the story of how men, women, and children can carve out a good life from the wilderness of a vanishing breed of Canadians, 20th century frontiersmen, like Bob Nichols. There are many like Bob Nichols in the canyon. For three decades, they've been coming here to live and work, knowing that they were leaving behind civilization as they had been used to it, not quite sure of what lay ahead, but willing to make a life of their own. The focal point of colony life, of course, is the job, the station that generates electricity 24 hours a day, every day of the year. The homes in the canyon were made comfortable and secure, ready for 90 degrees in the summer or 50 below in the winter. Most of all, there are the people of the canyon, friendly, helpful, hard-working, home-loving. People like people everywhere, except for their pioneer energy and outlook. Soon there will be a road to the outside. The canyon no longer a lonely outpost. Before the isolation of the canyon becomes lost in the past, let's follow Bob Nichols through a door still open to what used to be. Hi, welcome to the speeder shed. This speeder, as we call it, Big Brother's parked outside, uh, the only link to the canyon's had to the outside world. The hydro has a three-mile spur line, which runs from the canyon to Fraserdale, meets the main line of the O&R. The O&R train, which runs from Cochrane to Moose Knee, up one day and down the next. All the passengers and people in this place travel up and down. Also, all the food and supplies are brought in this way. But with the advent of this new road coming in, it looks like this. The old girl just about had it. <coughs> Things do change, and change for the better. This is one of the last few times the speeder will be running on this spur line. The road is being built that will become the main supplier of the canyon. The speeder will be used only for emergencies and will travel the main Ontario Northland track with railroad permission until the road is completed. Some of us canyon old timers can't help feeling a little sorry to see the last of the speeder. It's been pretty good to us over the years. It's a bumpy ride, so hang on. The new road to Fraserdale on the left there when it's finished, we'll connect with the road out to the Trans-Canada Highway, what we call Highway Number 11. Sometimes I meet people fresh in from the south, and they say to me, don't you have to be a little nuts to live away up here? I answer them, no, but it helps. Makes me think back to about a dozen years ago, when Fern and I first came to the canyon from Niagara Falls, from the banana belt to the deep freeze. We stuck it out, now we wouldn't change it for anything. The canyon is home to Fern, to me, and to the kids. 
Yes, the canyon is home to many like the Nichols. And, as elsewhere in the land, new homes are being built. Homes as good as any in an up-to-date city subdivision. But set down in this land of the Northern Lights for a growing population that is thrusting back to wilderness and dispelling the isolation. The Canyon Store and Post Office are popular meeting places for the women folk and their children and dogs. Or a back stoop for a friendly chat. And when it comes time for school, well, things are no doubt. The Nichols children, like children everywhere, say goodbye to mother and join in the popular games of childhood. But play must give way to work, and the school bell is as compelling in the canyon as elsewhere. Good afternoon. I'm Gladys Ramsbottom, principal of the Canyon School. Our school is very similar to schools all over the province, except perhaps for its situation. We teach all grades from kindergarten to grade 10 under the supervision of the Department of Education and our local school board. Miss Glendinning's class is singing the Black Fly song. This song has particular meaning for the people of the Canyon were very well acquainted with those small black monsters. Within the confines of the community, they are kept in abeyance with spray, though. The song was written by Wade Hemsworth, who is a member of a hydro survey crew here for some time. Now, would you like to come with me? you can see, education is a prime topic in Abitibi, too. Always the thought of Canyon parents is for their children. For family life and family fun are closely knit in the color. And a picnic is not something miles away. It's right next to the front door. And the marina on the Abitibi River is only a joyous step away for Bob Nichols and his son. One of the great things about living at the canyon is being able to be more of a father to your kids. Here, I have time for my family. The canyon's been good for my boys. Someday they'll be leaving for higher education. Until they do, well, we'll do a lot together That'll be mighty hard to do if we live in the city.
By the way, how do you like the cabin version? Built it myself in the hobby shop. Good family boat. When the fall comes, hunting cannot be far behind. Then it's winter, and ice fishing, and the usual fish story. But winter is not something to be feared by the canyon folk. They welcome its crisp, dry cold of the north, and the fullness of the days and nights it brings. It's another time for young and old to make their fun in the ways of the isolated Northland. Like the ski or motorized toboggan, a rapidly growing northern sport. Or that favorite spot at the canyon, the ski hill and the ski tub. start young here at the canyon, and there are expert ski instructors among the parents. Uh-oh. Hey, look out, Wendy! Nichols is a good man to turn to in an emergency. Hello. Oh, yes, Mr. Nichols. Wendy Beamish on the main ski hill. Oh, I see. Uh, well, Mr. Nichols, you know what to do. Uh, you can tell whether she should be moved or not. Uh, will you bring her to the hospital, please? and make sure she's kept warm. Thank you, and I'll have things ready here. What happened to you? I fell when I was skiing. Oh. Why did you hurt yourself? On my left foot. Oh, that's too bad. Well, I'd better just take a look at it. Okay? Can you wiggle your toes, Wendy? No. I'd better have a look at the other foot, Wendy. 
And then we can compare the two. All right? Okay. Hello, Miss Redgate. What's happened to Wendy? Well, I think she's broken a small bone in her foot, but I'm not quite sure. But I don't think it's anything too serious. But I think to be on the safe side, we'd better get her off down to see the doctor. Uh, do you think you'd be able to go along with her? Yes, I guess so. Well, oh, that's fine. Well, I'll fix up the foot and bandage it firmly, and then she'll be quite comfortable. And Bob Nichols will take care of all the transportation arrangements. And I don't think you have too much to worry about. All right? is still the generating station, which must keep going 24 hours a day. This means men working in shifts to start a generator, to keep watch in the control room, to issue stores, to carry out the many repairs and maintenance jobs that keep the power flowing. Yet these are men and fathers, and they still think of how things are going at home and worry about little girls like Wendy Beach. Hi. Hi, Bob. How's Wendy, Don? She's fine. Nothing serious. She'll be back on today's train in time for the carnival, Bob. That's fine. I'm glad to hear it. Wendy Beamish was back at the canyon in time to watch the fun of the annual winter carnival. Abitibi Canyon would be complete without a dance in the recreation hall. Although any occasion is sufficient excuse for a friendly get-together. Hello CQ, 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 CQ 20. 20 meter phone, hello CQ. Northern Ontario calling. The and there are those who have to tell the world about the canyon. Fellows like Radio Ham, Jim Brown, for instance. Ah, nice copy, and this readability perfect here. So I'd mention a point of interest here. You were saying that you had just finished your water carnival down there in Bermuda. Well, we've just finished our winter carnival up here in Canyon. Oh yeah, in answer to your query, why I don't come out of the bush into civilization. Well, I tell you, Andy, as far as we are concerned here, this is civilization, right here. Bob and Fern Nichols would be among the first to agree with Jim Brown in their love of the canyon, and what to them has truly become civilization and home. The Nichols are happy in their comfortable house, surrounded by their children, who, except for Tommy, the eldest, are native-born members of the colony. They reflect the peace and contentment that seem synonymous with family living at Abitibi Canyon. 
They know there is nothing more beautiful than a northern winter sunset over the quiet homes of the colony. Today, the canyon is isolated. Tomorrow, the new road will lead to the outside. But Fern and Bob Nichols, pioneers of the 20th century, are never lonely in a lonely land. As they look down over their snowy domain to the ever-working powerhouse, the forest around them echoes the call of the king, and they know that they are home.